Yeah, good day YouTubers, uh, Spanner Man again here with another video. To get, today we're going to talk about breaking the chain and uh, joining the chain. So for those that are not too familiar, we'll just go over a few little details there. Uh, this type of chain breaker is an Oregon type chain breaker. Uh, that's what most people use. A few little uh, tricks and tips. Inside here there's a little point, if we sort of like, like just zoom in, uh, you'll see that uh, we'll see if we can zoom in there and see if you can see that little point there it is there you can just see it no we'll just try and zoom in again I think you can just see that there yeah anyway what that actually looks like is this this is exactly what it looks like now that point there, if you don't put that right on the rivet, you can damage that quite easily. So you've got to be a little bit careful. Now, this type of vise that we use, this is an adjustable vise. There's also this type of vise. I don't recommend this type. Tolerance is on it a little bit big. You can hold the chain much better with this type of vise. Now, when you break a chain... You break the chain, not at the tooth. We'll just see if we can show you this, where to break the chain. You break the chain in between the teeth. So at this drive link here, this is the part where you break it right here. Tip the chain over the breaker with the teeth facing towards you. Then place the vise between the two teeth and you'll see the drive link on either side of the vise. So tighten that up on either side of the vise. Now, what you've got to be very careful of here is that when you bring down the pin, it must be right smack in the middle because if you bring that pin down right on the edge you'll end up damaging the pin and I did that in the first week so just take your time that looks pretty good so apply a bit of pressure and that should break okay so that's broken now just make sure it's sitting in properly in the vise again. Center it in the middle. Take your time. If you get it wrong, you're liable to damage. Now, that's that's pretty good. No matter of... Okay, so as you saw, that broke quite easily. And there's the pieces. So that's breaking the chain. Pretty straightforward. As long as you remember to get that pin that's here this little tiny pin here there's a grub screw you undo that grub screw and this fits inside now just remember these are about eight dollars australia to replace those so they last quite a long time if you take your time just to reiterate how to put this on the chain we'll just do that again for those that maybe didn't see it is that you put this vise between two drive links and, and you'll have the drive links either side. So that's, that's where you uh, break the chain. So when you put a new link in, you'll put a link in the drive link on either side. So that's what we're going to do now. So what we'll do now... Let's go over to the chain spinner and we'll spin a uh, join a chain. Just a few little things to mention. There's two little anvils that fit in here. I'll just bring them here. And the only difference between the two is the gap. One's bigger than the other. So you've got an A and a B. A being the largest one, 
which is for 3.8 chain and 404, and B being for your 3.8 low profile and uh, quarter inch chains. So the other thing that you'll need is a preset. So that's a preset that's a, made by Still. And that's the tie strap. So that's how you join them and you spin the end. Now, be very careful because some brands of these won't fit every chain. An example is uh, a lot of the drive master links, the set presets, may not fit Oregon or vice versa. So just be aware of that. Okay, so now that you've broken the chain, you may want to join a chain or break a chain for various reasons. Uh, it could be broken teeth and you need to repair them, or someone might give you, a, say, a 20-inch chain, but you've got a 16-inch chainsaw or a 18-inch, uh, and you could say, oh, I could use that chain only if I could break it uh, and join it, or you might have decided to buy one of these spinners and decided to, uh, yeah, make your own loops. So we'll just zoom back out a bit so that you can see, and... We'll try and put this together as best as possible so that you can see. So it's just a matter of holding the two ends together like this. Just see whether you can see this properly. They're the two ends. We'll see if we can do it this way. So if that's our preset and the preset has a little notch down the bottom and most of the links have a little notch down the bottom so it's just a matter of popping that preset in there putting that on like so and putting that little tie strap over there and, just, and that's okay that's ready to go into the machine now where the rivets protrude at on the tie strap they've got to go this side so we've got to put our a anvil in so we'll put our a anvil in there so that's our a anvil Let's wind that back out pop that in now we have to place our chain carefully so that this end of the preset is the end it's going to get spun. So then it's just a matter of turning the handle, taking up the slack, making sure that the preset rivet is in, in there. Okay, so that's ready to go now. We might put a drop of oil on there. So I'll just get the oil can. Always put a little bit of oil on these. There's just a little bit. It helps. Now, we don't just flare this rivet. We flare half the rivet because we've got to make sure that the rivet is not going to bind up or push on one side. So we just turn the handle a bit like that. We partially flare it. Open up move to the other one turn the handle and proceed to flare this rivet now i'm only going to undo it and inspect just want to make sure that i don't overspin that doesn't look too bad we'll just close this back up again and we'll give a little bit more so you can do this a couple of times until you're used to it. That's actually not a bad rivet. That spun pretty good. There's an old saying, if you can't get your fingernail under it, look, there's nothing wrong with that. Just see if I can turn it over. That is a beautiful spun rivet. Look at that. You see the oil on there. Always use a bit of oil. 
Look, I can tell you right now, that rivet is spun really well and it will never come apart uh, using one of these. These are a beautiful uh, little machine. So look, I, I hope, uh, I don't think there's much else I could tell you. It's pretty straightforward. The only mistake that you can make is that when you put the preset in there, some people maybe try and spin the rivet on the first pass. Don't do that because then what can happen, the tie strap can buckle out and come off the rivet on the other side, and then you'll have trouble putting it back on. So when you first put it in, you just spin and tighten the handle up maybe a quarter of a turn just to give it a slight little bit of a flare to stop the, the tie strap from coming off. And then you put it on the other move it on the opposite side link and then you can fully flare it then you can go back to the one that's partially flared so just remember that you partially flare it on one side only just to stop the tie strap from coming off because if you fully flare it you might find that it buckles off the other side so to do it you just do a little bit on one side and then you fully flare it on the other side and you go back to the other side and fully do that just take your time uh yeah, and that's about all I've got to say. And then you'll be able to flare uh, nice rivets like the one I just shown you. I was really happy with that. That came out really well. So, yeah, just take your time. Thanks for watching and bye for now.